All right, guys, so the max effort method does not work because you're not doing it right. So we've seen a lot all over the internet, people talking about how conjugate doesn't work, the max effort method doesn't work, blah, 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 whatever. The fact of the matter is we believe that the max effort method is one of the best ways to train absolute strength, bar none. But it needs to be done in a certain way in order for you to get the most out of it. This all came about because we reposted an article by Dr. Seth Albersworth. Check it out over at EliteFTS.com where he talks about the max effort method not working for somebody because they are just simply not doing it correctly or they think they're doing it correctly, but at the end of the day, they're not. So for those who are unaware or unconditioned to what the max effort method is, the max effort method is a part of the conjugate training system. I'm sure you've seen it if you've been following Elite FTS for long enough. And it is one of the types of days and types of training days that we have here at Elite FTS for our lifters, for our athletes, whatever. So what is the max effort training method? Well, it focuses on your one rep max for a very particular lift, right? It can be a squat, it can be a bench, it can be a variation of them. You can add bands, you can add chains, whatever. We have a lot of videos breaking down conjugate overall. Uh, I believe Dave, we reposted a little bit, a little while ago, Dave breaking down all the methods of conjugate, breaking down even how to program them all. So go check that video out, it's on our channel. You'll love it. But specifically the max effort method, we need to go in before we go into whether or not it works or how it works, we need to go into the purpose of the max effort method. Max effort training, again, talking about a one rep max here and working about heavy weights is all about building intramuscular and intermuscular coordination. So what I mean by that is not only the ability for a muscle to contract you know, the coordination within that one muscle, but how that muscle interacts with all the other muscles to produce a firing pattern that becomes more efficient. When you're talking building strength, you're talking about building skill, about neurological efficiency, how quick your nervous system can fire all of your muscles at the same time to produce that force to push that weight. That's what you're looking for. We're looking for a strain. The max effort method is not about breaking PRs as much as it is about you straining under load. Because what happens with that is when we strain, we learn to think under heavy weight. We learn to orient ourselves and get more comfortable with that heavier weight. And if you're a power lifter, that's the name of the game. We need to get more comfortable under heavier and heavier loads over the course of time. And not only be able to think, but be able to course correct and to be able to efficiently move that weight and understand where our body is in relation to that weight. Like I said, it builds our ability to focus, it boosts confidence, and it's that awareness. See, what a lot of people that haven't been training for a long time, as soon as they get under a heavy weight and they don't think they have it, they strain for a second and cut the brakes, right? They just pop the chute and they give up on the rep and then they fail. If you're used to training with a max effort method and, and your focus is that strain, you start to build an awareness. You start to build that confidence and you start to build the ability to keep putting maximal force into the bar for longer and longer periods of time. See, what a lot of people forget is if you can maintain the highest level of force you can against a heavier and heavier weight, say right now you can only hold it for about two seconds. Now imagine if you could have that maximal force for four seconds or five seconds, that weight will move. That's how that works. Not only that, the max effort method is a great way to determine weak points, right? We have mentioned before, weak points can be physical, mental, uh, or technical. And max effort training is a great way to see where that breakdown occurs. Does that breakdown happen after one or two sets? Does that breakdown happen when your head wasn't in it? Does that breakdown happen because there is a definitive weak portion of that chain that is not holding the, the same amount of force as the rest of your body? 
So a couple of prerequisites when you're talking about max effort training. I would not do max effort training with a pure beginner. There is a required or prerequisite when it comes to skill and technique in order for someone to get the most out of this. We need them to be able to maintain a position long enough to strain, maintain a position long enough to get the benefits of this style of training. So how come the max effort method doesn't work for some people? Well, first and foremost, they're not doing enough volume. A lot of times you'll see people go into the gym, they'll hit their, they'll work up to something relatively heavy, they'll hit a rep at about an eight out of 10 RPE, and then they make a stupid jump, try to do something, and they fail. One of the biggest parts of the article that Seth mentions is having smaller jumps. See, uh, Louis wrote in his book of methods that you should have about three to four reps over that 90%. And if you're able to get more and more reps over that 90%, there comes a point where your fatigue sets in and you're just not able to complete the rep. So the idea is you need to have that appropriate volume in those ranges of max effort work to get the most out of it. Now, what you'll also see a lot of people do, they'll go into the gym, work up to something heavy, and then they half-ass the rest of their movements or they take out their secondary barbell movements that are very, very important to help build the weaknesses that you find from that max effort movement. Those secondary movements are super, super important because again, they build on the weaknesses that you can find. They build on the weaknesses that you have and they give you more adequate volume at those higher percentages with very specific exercises based around what you need. Again, if you're not doing them, you're not getting the benefit of them. And that's a lot of what we see when people saying that the max effort method doesn't work. Next up, the dynamic work, right? So a lot of people don't necessarily believe that dynamic work works, but I think of it more as technique work and force development and trying to maintain a really, really good technique through faster reps, through different modalities that you may not necessarily use with the max effort method. Again, technique is king. If you have a heavy day, AKA a max effort day, and then you have a technique day, you're getting so many more reps, so many more clean, well done reps that help lead you to bigger jumps in your max effort training and eventually if you compete to the PRs on the platform. Finally, another reason that your max effort training does not work is because you have not put the adequate time into hypertrophy or your GPP or your physical preparedness. It, at the end of the day, if you can't recover, if you keep beating yourself up with heavy singles, something's gonna hurt, something's not gonna feel good, or you just may not be able to recover from workout to workout, and you just end up digging yourself a bigger and bigger hole. So guys, max effort works. It has been working for a lot of people for a very long time, if you do it correctly. If you have the appropriate volume at the appropriate intensities, if you go into max effort training having a very clear understanding what the purpose of it is, right? It's not just go in there, hit something heavy and leave. The goal is to strain. The goal is to find variations that you can gain information from to pinpoint what you need to do in the rest of your training. So before you go saying that the max effort method is dumb, it's only for multiply lifters or anything that else that we've seen and heard online, kind of get your facts straight, understand what you're doing in the gym, how have you been implementing this style of training, and making sure that you're in a position where you're doing what you need to do before making any sort of conclusions like that. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for checking it out. On behalf of myself and Jacob behind the camera, thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next one.